My name is T and today we'll be throwing cylinders. This project will be to make a personalized grip cup in a future video, so if you're interested, please stay tuned. Because of the current pandemic, we are reopening with new rules and practices in place. This means we will be able to provide bats, water buckets, and wheels, all of which will be cleaned by staff between classes. However, you will be responsible for bringing your own tools. For this project, you will need a pound and a half of clay, small sponge, a tile sponge, rubber rib, wooden rib, needle tool, and a wire tool. Let's get started. I'm using a pound and a half of clay and using an open palm to patty cake your clay so we get a nice little volcano shape. Go ahead and seal your clay to the bat at the bottom here with some water. You can use a finger to apply pressure or your whole hand, either way works. Feel free to clean off your wheel if it's distracting to your eye at any time. You can use a wooden rib or a sponge. Now let's work on centering. First, speed your wheel up as fast as it goes. You want to anchor your arms by getting close to the wheel and positioning your elbows at your inner thighs. When coning up, you want to use the base of your hand to push into the clay. Your fingers should curl around the clay as support, not really to push in. When coning down, sometimes it helps to really use your whole body. Just cone down with your whole chest. For this part, your left hand should stay at the side of the clay, and your right hand should readjust so that it's pushing down on the top of the clay, but make sure to do this at an angle, not just straight down. Otherwise, you'll get a mushroom shape that we don't want. You can check to see if your clay is centered by looking or also sometimes it's helpful to run a finger slowly up the side, not pressing in at all, just holding your finger against the clay to see if it pushes you. Now let's open our cylinder. I usually slow my wheel down a bit at this point. You can always hold your finger to the side of your clay to try to gauge how deep to make your hole, but it's not necessary. Use your left hand for support and push in with a finger on your right hand. I'm taking some of the slip off so it's easier to work the clay. You can use a sponge or rubber rib tool to do this. Sometimes you'll find a bubble in your clay as you're working. This usually means you didn't wedge the clay well enough. If this happens, slow your wheel down to find the bubble and pop it using your needle tool. Then go ahead and compress to make your clay even again. You'll notice I'm pulling towards myself as straight as I can. If you notice your clay has gotten off center, that probably means you're pulling too fast. You can always slow your wheel down if that helps to sync your hand speed up with the wheel speed better. Now let's pull the walls of our cylinder. Use a tool or your nail to scrape the bottom of your clay, leaving a little shelf. When pulling, I like to use a sponge on the outside because it holds moisture better than my hand. Try to hold slightly equal pressure with your hand on the outside pressing in a little harder. This is to compensate for how the clay likes to flare out wider because of how the wheel spins. Also try to pull at the same speed as your wheel is going. Sometimes after popping too big a bubble, or if your clay twists at the top or is too thin, you can use your needle tool to trim the top right off. To do this, slow your wheel down and use your right hand to press the needle tool in at an angle. Use your left hand to catch the needle tool once it's through the wall. Then hold it as even as possible to make an even rim.
Keep pulling as many times as you need. You want to try to get your walls even, meaning the bottom, middle, and top are all about the same thickness. You'll notice my cylinder is a bit more flared at the top, which works great for the grip cup project I'll be making later. However, it's not necessary to make, so don't worry too much about flaring the rim if it's not working for you, or if it's not the project you're working on. Once you're happy with your cylinder, stop your wheel and turn it off. Use your wire tool to evenly cut the cylinder off the bat by pulling towards yourself. It can help to take your splash off to get a more even pull. Then rotate your cylinder instead of pulling it straight off. Set it aside to let it dry. If you're following along with the grip cup project, you'll want to only let it dry a little. You want it dry enough that it doesn't stick to your fingers, but wet enough that it still retains that plasticity of wet clay so we can move it easily. Okay, so now we'll move on to molding our grip cup. Again, you want to make sure that your clay has had just a little bit of time to dry. I'm right-handed, so I'll be using that hand to leave the imprint shape I want. And then I'll be using my left hand as support as well as to help define features. Give your cup a good squeeze. Use your left hand to support the other side of the cup and try to preserve that nice round shape. With your right hand, push into the cup using your inner knuckles and top of your palm. Use that sponge in your left hand to support the clay on the inside. To help define the space between your fingers, keep your right hand gripping the cup and with your left hand inside the cup, use your finger to make a kind of sweeping motion between each of your fingers. Be careful not to do this too hard so you don't poke a hole in your cup. Once you're done, you can use your left hand to cup the outside and round out that rim again. If you think your thumb imprint needs some more definition, you can always do what you did with your other fingers and sweep the space around your finger to create more of a clear image. Take a look at your cup and decide if there's any areas you'd like to flesh out more, or if you need to round the rim again. And we're done! Now let your cup dry slowly under some plastic. You want your clay to be soft enough to carve, but dry enough that it holds its shape, because next week I'll show you how I trim the rim and foot for this project. Thanks for watching.